I'm going to start with something I, I really didn't think I would say um, about a Disney Star Wars show. I kind of liked it. Um, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I it's a <laughs> bit of a it's a bit of a slow burner, and I'm shook at the fact that I quite enjoyed it. But I can tell that it's competently directed. Um, it, it looks very like grounded and <clears throat> gritty, and um, like kind of low level stuff. Like it's just kind of character based drama more than anything else. Um, and it feels like it was actually written by people who somewhat resemble human adults. Um, compared to like everything else that Disney's put out in the Star Wars universe. You know, the characters actually kind of act like human beings. And yeah, like when you get to that third episode, there's, you know, even if you, when it comes down to like the security troops who kind of conduct themselves in a professional manner and actually put some thought into what they do and how they deploy, uh, I was really surprised at the, the level of intelligence that seemed to have gone into it. Um, and so... It's been way better than I thought it would be. It's got plenty of issues for sure, but it's not terrible as far as I can tell. Would you have still have had the same opinion if they hadn't released three and they'd only released two episodes? Hmm. I, I think I would still have praised the, the sort of tone and the, the direction and so on because that hasn't changed. Um, it's just you get a fair amount more payoff with this. Can and it, it does... It feels like they have kind of split a pilot episode into like three three other episodes and maybe stretched it out a little bit too much. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really stand by the criticisms that it's boring. It's just a slow burner and like it kind of pays off ultimately. Uh, here's another question. Would you be saying the same thing if Boba Fett and Kenobi never actually came out? This is what I asked myself, and <laughs> you, you, you'd have to go back even further than that and say, yeah, you I would. asked myself if the if the sequel movies hadn't come out. Um, and yeah, I think in that context, I might be like, this just feels weird and it doesn't really feel like Star Wars. Um, but yeah, in the context that we have, it's probably the least shit thing that Disney have put out in the Star Wars universe so far. Uh, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I don't hate it. It's, I heard it's the, um, the it doesn't feel like Star Wars line from from a few people. I can I can go and see where that's coming from. I, I don't know that I'd I'd even really level that as a criticism. Though. I mean, bearing, quite a lot of people have been saying for quite some time that one of the many many things Star Wars needs to do is to move on and to actually do something different than the Skywalker arc or any even any grand adventure that's tied to Galactic Empire. Now, of course, this hasn't gone away in terms of its timeline but it is it does seem from what i've seen of it anyway to at least be trying to tell a different type of story it's similar i guess in the way that rogue one did and it's sort of its strength that it hasn't got so much baggage it didn't have the weight of expectation much as rogue one wasn't particularly anticipated and or hasn't really been looked forward to by a great many people no one's really put a huge amount of stock in it and it doesn't have a huge amount that it can really cock up because it's not playing around with any established character other than yeah. those established just yeah. in that one film in rogue one I, so I think it's, it's the, it's, of, it's the no epitome of the it, but... yeah it's the epitome of the small scale drama and so yeah like there's no at this point, there's no massive stakes involved. Like, there's no like really important characters that um, you know. The, the you didn't see the a stormtrooper. Yeah, like they, these are like e these are the guys who are in this are like the level below stormtroopers. They're like corporate security men. Um, and oh my god, how just it's been it's because like this is the thing. I'm I've got so many thoughts about this at once, but that's one of the things I actually really liked was I just did, I'm tired of all the Star Wars stuff. And, you know, because I flash back, I'm assuming you guys are all aware of this, but Grace Randolph has that viral clip of she's like, there's no interesting things in this. There's no Death Star, there's no Stormtroopers, <laughs> there's no Vader, there's no Mark <laughs> Tarkin, there's, there's no Leia. What am I supposed to talk about? It's like, oh my god, stop. Like, yeah. stop, I swear to god. The fact that we have this burly security guard man who passionately explains, like, law and order is important and that we're going into disrepair. And that when he finds out some of his men are getting killed before the, the reinforcements have arrived and he passionately is like, no, we got to get to them and help them. I was just like, I don't, I'm not familiar with this coming from Star Wars. I don't yeah. understand. I've never seen this before. Like, Th this, yeah, is a, this is a, sh sorry, on you go. Uh, it's, for me, I, I do agree. I like the world and I like the setup. But those first two episodes, you could have made that in 10 minutes and stuck it in the third episode and no one would have known any difference. Like, you can say it's a slow burn, but literally, like, nothing happened in those first two episodes. The entire stories were pointless. And I... 
liked the third a lot more than I did the first two, but I was actually surprised when the second one ended because I'm like, this this entire thing was pointless. It didn't go anywhere. It didn't serve any pointless. There was no reason for that to exist. Um, and I, I, I think it could have been greatly cut down and it would have been much better. But also to the Star Wars point, don't you think there are some core points to an IP which have to exist for it to be counted as that IP? Like, I know there are non-Force people in Star Wars, but if you're going to do that, it could be any other IP in the world. And I think then you get down to the point of, does it gain anything from being the Star Wars IP, or would it just have been better being its own thing? I, I get what you're saying. I, I think on that point, there's a smart way of doing that, a subtle way, and a lazy way. And the lazy way is to have lightsabers and stormtroopers mm -hmm. and star destroyers and TIE fighters, just all those like recognizable pieces of, of equipment and ships and all that sort of thing, which is just the surface level stuff. What this does is sets it in the Star Wars world and like the world building is slowly built up. You know, you, you get the idea of this being like some backwater planet that's like some industrial wasteland you know and like the, the people that are scratching out in existence there are the lowest of the low um but the the little tidbits of like the world building that it gives you about the state of the galaxy and what the empire actually does um i i think in this case it works to the show's benefit it's like those things suddenly become a lot more interesting like if you were to see just a stormtrooper now it would be an interesting event because you've established that these guys only show up when the shit hits the fan. And, like, keeping order in these little planetary uh, systems, like, uh, out in the middle of nowhere. It's just up to, the, like, the local, you know, police forces. And so, and you establish... Guards, yeah. yeah, you establish a, a sort of set of stakes, and so things become a lot more meaningful when they do start to work them in. And I'm sure they will as the show progresses, because we're only three episodes in, and I think there's, there's quite a few coming up. Um... And I like this approach. I like the fact that it doesn't just blow its load immediately and be like, "Ah, see all this stuff that you remember? Here's some Death Stars. Here's some, like, Stormtrooper uniforms. Um, for me, I think it works okay. Like, I get your point, though, that this, as it stands right now, could essentially just be a generic sci-fi story kind of anywhere. Um, mm. But I think that the characters and stuff are, are well-developed enough that I can live with it as it is. Yeah, Cassian? Connecting it to... Do you think Cassian actually, like... Uh, do you he, care about Cassian at all? Because I he, don't. He's, yeah, he's, he was yeah. the weakest aspect in a lot of ways, and I think some of it comes down to, like, maybe the actor doesn't have a huge amount of charisma. The character wasn't a massively interesting in Rogue One, and so he's kind of tainted by that. Um, but again, like, they, they give him a backstory, they give kind of an explanation for, for how he came to be in this place, and he's, you know, at this point, he's not, like, the resistance fighter that we see him as later. He's just a guy looking for his sister, and kind of panicked by what's going on, he was, doesn't have the answers. I thought it was curious that the first sort of significant thing that happens in the show, like, the first scene where he kills the two, uh, you could call them muggers, I guess, uh, uh, it's kind of an echo of his first scene in Rogue One, right? Because, yeah. I, there's a scene I won't forget, because I remember how I felt watching it. I was just like, whoa, Star Wars, look at you, having a good guy kill one of his friends in order to prevent him from being captured by it. I was like, oh, that's a little, a little bit edgy of you to do. Didn't expect that. But then I don't think Rogue One really follows through on that expectation, that it's a film about like the worser parts of the good guys and the better parts of the bad guys. And I was curious if that's what this show is going to try and do especially considering the security force, I really think they tried to put effort into being like, hey, the security guys, they're not just like crazy meathead bad guys who are killing everybody. They're, they're they kind are. of there to just maintain law and order. And like, for the most part, they seem fairly like, okay, you know, they're quite, um, they crack down quite hard on people, but like, they're not going to just kill people indiscriminately. And th this is another thing I really like about this show. Like, the death of a person is actually considered to be quite a big event. Like, if someone gets murdered or killed in a battle, like, that's a big deal like it would be in our world and so it gets reflected like crimes are followed up on and um, when andor kills those two guys at the beginning like that triggers a chain of events that that brings down you know all this heat on and it. i i kind of like that um that, <coughs> i don't know what to call him like chief or whatever you want to say about him but just the fact that he he's, he's very matter of fact he's clearly quite experienced he knows exactly what's going on with all of this and tells this new guy how it works right we cover yeah. it up it's not worth following whoever killed them you know, they, they were the idiots that got themselves in this position. Ultimately, the less eyes we have on us from the Empire, the better everybody here can function, including you. Like, it's, it came across as 
kind of a threat as well. Like, don't yeah, well, he, screw this he, up. He, yeah, he demonstrates a good insight into, like, you know, because he talks about how, you know, these guys were at a brothel that aren't, isn't supposed to exist and it's an expensive one that they shouldn't be able to afford and, like, all this stuff that like, he understands, like, these guys were way across the line anyway. And, like, if all that came out, it would reflect on him as much as anything yeah, else. Yeah, and the crime rates go up. Yeah, and so it's... That's it's just a very human, um, I guess, little side story that, that kind of makes sense in context. That was what I wanted to like come out in the first episodes. Rather than talking about like a mechanic and her boyfriend and stuff, they could have gone further into what on earth they were doing in that place in the first place. Because they went in, spoke to someone and just left immediately. So they were only after like as much information as he was and it's just kind of ignored. Maybe they'll pick it up later on, but... Um, I, I needed desperately more plot. And they, like, for me, the problem is definitely the first two episodes. I, I just think they needed more story. Because... I, 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 I can understand why you, you feel that way. I, I can see it. Because, like, I think the first episode is literally just, like, Andal walking around talking to people, and we meet them and find out who they are, I guess. Which isn't exactly very... The second episode very... was largely... <laughs> the second oh, thought, episode I was, was say... of people going, we're traveling here! It's like, oh, I was going to okay. say first and second. I mean, there's a couple of things that don't qualify as those in the first and second, I guess. I'm trying to think, but the third one definitely is like, oh, okay, now we're kicking into gear, we're doing things. If it um, had started with the third, I'd have a different opinion on it. The, the, problem, my, my... With, the problem with the, if you want things to happen, and you want Andor to be defined immediately by the things that happen within it, then you risk throwing people into what is essentially a series of contrived events with characters they don't know or don't remember or don't care about. Now, I'm not saying that their attempts to make us care about the character in these long, slow moments are particularly successful, but I think you do actually have to do that, given that what Star Wars is trying once again to do is to prove that it is actually bigger than the Jedi and that it can tell stories that are realistic and that don't require the swinging around of lightsabers or the frequent presence of, of convenient uh, icons like the Death Star. I think we'll, we'll get some of those later. It's tried this a couple of times. If you remember you know, when The Mandalorian first came out, the Mandalorian is also kind of ponderous. I mean, it has a much stronger MacGuffin from the off, but it's still this small scale, quite world rich telling of a story. I mean, what it wants to do first and foremost is to flesh out this backwater part of the universe that nobody has seen before. It doesn't want to wow you with events straight away. I mean, the Mandalorian very quickly changed its approach and now has the lightsabers and all the rest of it. But when it started, it was trying to do, I think, a slower a uh, more loving exploration of the world. Andor is doing that in a darker way, and it's trying to be more serious about it. It doesn't yet have that strong sort of MacGuffin pull. And I, 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 like, I actually quite like that it doesn't. I think if you had just launched straight into um, action and straight into event, and we're just expected to immediately re-inhabit Andor, who very few, very few people actually managed to inhabit in Rogue One anyway, we would just have been thinking, oh, well, it, this is actually more of a generic Star Wars show than we got. Um, because it's just uh, character on screen, moving, fight, move, fight, move, fight, end. Um, I'm, not I'm quite happy that they didn't do that. I'm on, a, I'm on about like actual plot, not just people talking to each other about not nothing in particular in rooms. I suppose that's arguably large... everything with the security guards would be that, right? Um, the security guards was largely explaining how the system worked, so I wouldn't actually count that because you learned information from that. But things like her and her husband and like when you're asked to recall like 40 minutes no, dust ups <laughs> they were so like boring calling back specific scenes um what what i mean is did you ever watch uh, spartacus i think spartacus I does a great job of mixing plot like political plot and maneuvering around with action i think you can have action scenes and plot together and i don't even think like in the first two episodes there was much plot actually done at all it was, like, for instance, that robot, right? That robot went across the floor for, like, three minutes, and it didn't do anything. There was no point to that three minutes unless he got peed on. <laughs> well, yeah. Exactly. Uh, I, at, I, at the I, start, I... he's walking down a corridor. It takes four minutes until he's out of that first building. A lot and of this stuff... nothing. Yeah, a lot of this stuff I would, like, put under the category. And li this, is, this is probably an example of, like, where the writing wasn't as efficient as it could be because, you know, you can either... Do some world building you can do character development or you can advance the plot and ideally you should be able to do all three at the same time if you're really good at writing one that that first two episodes fell into the trap of, of was a lot of world building just allowing you to kind of soak up 
I guess, the culture of this world, this backwater place. There was lots of fairly long establishing shots of just people going about their lives and like Andor making his way down the streets and things like that and bumping into people um, and just just things like that. And ideally, that could have all been integrated slightly better to the point where like you're advancing the plot, but you also get to this feel of the world and you can learn things about him and other people as you go. As it stands, it kind of does each thing separately. That's probably why those first two episodes feel so long, because it's a slightly inefficient way of doing it. Um, but again, I, I guess I fall into this this category of I care more about things that happen once I feel like I'm invested in that world, once I feel like it's it's lived in and it's plausible. And that's what I get from this. Um, when it comes to like the world of, of Boba Fett, for example, didn't give a shit about any of it because it's all just no. bleh, nonsense. Like I didn't care about it. It doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel believable. This kind of does. Um, and the, the staging of it, I think, really helps the, the, the way it's directed. Um, it doesn't just feel like it's a really hastily contrived set with, with uh, a projector around it to, to give you the sense that you're somewhere else. It kind of feels like a real place. And all of that stuff combined together just made me feel like, all right, this is, this is a place that I can get invested in. Um, even if Andor, I know what's going to happen to him ultimately, uh, I'm kind of interested in to see where this goes. Um, because again, the characters feel like they're part of this world, that they're, they're more real uh, in that sense. And it all just, I don't know, it gives things more significance, I suppose, is what I'm saying. It, it does allow for the telling of, of stories that you wouldn't get if you did have grand narrative type Star Wars. I mean, you can't do localism in grand narrative stories, or at least it's very, very difficult to do that. Um, yep. And it's it's still too early. So I, I, so I always thought that this, to the extent Andor might not be terrible, I think it was always the case that it might even be helped by the fact we already know how it ends, because it's not then going to get pretensions it's not going to get taken away with itself it's not going to go around saying we are going to redefine the entire star wars universe we're going to tell the next big saga it can't mm -hmm. do that obviously it's mm -hmm. time limited and that does allow it more time to explore the world it's also answering you know some of the more intriguing questions i think one of the only intriguing questions that was ever raised in the mandalorian again was when they have Werner herzog's character saying the empire improves every system it touches and that's an interesting idea but you don't really get to see life under the empire and that's the first sort of hint we get at the empire's perspective and that perhaps there is a, a material economic social reason that the people haven't rebelled against the empire yet the mandalorian doesn't really go on to explain or to explore no, it that. Only it. yeah this show seems to be paying a bit more attention to that i would agree with you i think if if you know it would be nicer if it had stronger characters it would be nicer perhaps if it had a stronger through line in plot across the first two episodes but I think there is still, you know, it's still worth praising it for what it has done well or reasonably well or surprisingly well, which is the world building stuff. The problem is going to be is does it come off the rails later on when it decides it wants to portray the Empire as allegory? And a lot of the interviews and the, the pre-publicity material would seem to suggest that they are going to try and use the Empire as allegory for modern day political concern. You're going to get... Um, fairly objectionable strong woman character who's an imperial officer that we're going to have to admire because she's more competent at genociding than the men are for example that's sort of the takeaway of one of the interviews um and whether they want to do as some of the other people have famously said the, the migrant experience um are they going to really really smash you over the head with that later on i think it will come off the rails if it does that because okay it might have done some things well in terms of its world building so far but it's not built up the kind of affection that makes me sort of want to lie down and, and let it have its way with me like that so we'll... <laughs> <laughs> that's the benchmark for any show really um, um, when you were talking about the the you know the character who's going to be introduced later on who's like the imperial officer that's like uh you know your your generic strong female character um one thing that did jump out at me actually that was kind of shocking is that the the girlfriend of andor and i can't remember the character's name for the life of me i think it's only mentioned like once or something um, but like when she gets arrested by the security forces and like the camera's really close in on her as they're approaching her to arrest her and she's got like her hands up like that and I was just bracing myself for a, another ridiculous girl boss moment where she turns around and disarms them and kicks the shit out of like five guys all at the same time um, and it doesn't happen they just arrest her and handcuff her to a wall and that's it like she's out of the game and I thought I think they even hit her holy as well. shit this is like being real. It's like being realistic about what people can actually do. I'm shocked. Um, I don't think that's that was 
That's not his girlfriend, right? <laughs> That's the, the other guy's girlfriend. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It kind of implies that they've got a past history. They, like I think they're exes. And... I don't know, but yeah. um, yeah. Funnily enough, I feel like this this was going to be a problem that my if this show was going to be even halfway enjoyable, that it's still not going to make Andor someone that I like. It's going to be someone else, and I'm actually like more fond of the captain security guard man than most of these characters. I actually feel like they've been put in. I don't know if you guys picked this up, but in his scenes, I was like. When we first meet him, he's almost very nervous and uh, forthcoming with his his boss, and he's shocked that the boss is basically like, "Let's cover up these murders." Obviously, from the boss's point of view, he has his argument, but to him, that's like horrifying because he's trying to uphold law and order. He wants to make sure that the the world is served, and the, the, he even like exclaims, "Like they were murdered! Like like it's it's unethical. It's, it's horrible that we wouldn't try and search this out." And his story just seems to be like, "I want to find who killed them." And there's this moment where he's standing outside of the, I guess, security booth or whatever booth it is that they, they do whatever things they cover. And he's very nervous before he goes in. But once he's in, he's very stern and critical of the men working there. And everyone he encounters in the Empire is like running buildings. They're all just kind of like, why do you like, why are you doing this? Why do you care? Like, well, yeah, whatever. He's like, I'm going to have to search through and spool through all of this uh, footage and all this information relating to these ships coming in and out all day. And he's like, yeah do it or I'll find someone else. And the guy's like, shit, okay, geez. And then there's yeah. other people who are just like, why are we doing this? And it's just like, because I want you to do your fucking jobs. I was like actually in enjoying that there's the, the idea of this character who's uh, risen up the ranks because you, you meet these people in real life who like come into maybe um, you know a store you're working in and everyone's got a way of doing things, even if it breaks the rules or this, that, and the other. And it's like, this person's just like, you know, let's make this place better. Let's actually do something. And, and he meets this absolute boulder of a human being who's like shares his interest in trying to make things run properly um and i think they, they really rounded him out quite well with uh, he was at gunpoint and he was terrified and he just like gave Ander anything he wanted he's just like please 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 don't kill me he was like this uh, i just think that they, they, they've given him a lot of layers already so far and i'm mm -hmm. i have no idea what they're going to do with this guy or what kind of journey they're going to put him on but I like that he's not just that they're not the bad guys being stupid and evil and they need to be stopped. If anything, I could see them being galvanized against people like Cassian with good reason. It's like, look at the damage these people fucking cause. Look how much destruction has come as a result of them. Yeah. My favorite part with him was uh, when the car got blown up and he's just standing there, like almost kind of PTSD. He has no idea yeah. what to do or how to handle it. Um, and it was only because the other guy, which had had more experience of it, just came up and basically pulled him out of the yacht, like, we need to go, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. And you've seen that in other kind of war movies and stuff, but I've never seen anything like that in Star Wars, where it, a death is just, just kind of, yeah, we carry on. <laughs> there, there's just a lot of smart decision making, like, from those guys, and just, it, it kind of points to, like, the writers being fairly, like, switched on to how these things would actually be done. You know, even where they've, um, they've got the old lady um, prisoner... And, you know, they, they need to go and help out their buddies who've got, like, Andor and the other guy pinned down. Um, and initially, you know, the, the deputy inspector is just like, oh, leave leave one man here to guard her. And the, the Scottish guy is like, no, it's getting kind of ugly out there. They know we're here. Like, the, the locals um, better leave two or three guys here, like, as, as backup because this could get difficult. And I just thought that's that line didn't need to be in there, but it just shows that like they wanted to show that these guys are relatively experienced with crowd control, with managing these locals, um, and it's just it's just smart little details like that that I appreciated, and it just shows that like a bit of care and thought's gone into this. That was another bit I liked, and it was in that same scene where they're 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 getting panicked because there's an alarm going off and they have no idea what it means. They just know there's a lot of people and it's coming from all around yeah. them. And she's like, it's not the fact that when it's going that you need to worry, it's when it stops. And the moment it stops, they just panic and run. Uh, those are the kinds of things I liked, but everything that I like for that kind of thing tends to be from episode three. Because I, I think that's where you get to see the characters put into a situation which is kind of new. And maybe it was because it was outside their comfort zone and it allowed um, more, explanation, more exploration of how these characters would react than just, oh, I'm in an office kind of thing. Um, I do wonder how effective I would have found the payoffs relating to, like, Security Guard Man had I not had Episode 1 and 2 first. Because uh, one of the things I quite enjoyed was that um, if this were Rings of Power or whatever else, shitty TV show like She-Hulk, you know the scene where uh, they're rallying up their, their troops, they're explaining the situation to the Security Guard team and what they're going to have to do? You got the Boulder Man is, like, very straightforward. 
brass tactics. He knows exactly what to say to these guys, and he's being honest with them what they they're in for. And I even like that he says, like, you know, this guy's armed and dangerous. He took out two of our guys. Like, let's, let's not fuck around. This guy could kill us. You know, so be careful. And then he's like, right now, you know, our captain or whatever. And he, um, if you look at the words he actually says, they're not that bad. They're like quite encouraging and motivational. It's the delivery. Yeah. It's really stilted and awkward with pauses, and everyone's sort of just like, yeah. You know, he's like, we can, today is going to be a day uh, for justice and <clears throat> uh, courage. Yeah, and, and he like, says, like, yep. there's, there's not another, t- <laughs> there's no, there's no team I would rather go into this situation with than you guys. Um, and, you know, if he, if he delivered it with more conviction, that might have been yeah. kind of a rousing speech. But like you say, it's just kind of, he's nervous. He doesn't quite know what to say. And he's just kind of reeling off the corporate kind of speak. Um, and Very again, please clap sort of speech. Yeah. But again, like, it doesn't, it doesn't totally humiliate him. And it's not, yeah, it's not a ridiculous scene. It's just like if you're you, you pick up on the fact that he's just not quite there as an inspiring leader um, in in combat situations. And it again, it's just it's relatively subtle as these things go, but it's effective in fleshing out where he's at as a character and what his level yeah, of experience is. What I was going to say is, if it were the shittier TV shows, I feel like we would have had a scene right after with two of the security guardy people being like man his speech he must have been so insecure about his abilities yeah. and gosh he seems like he wouldn't be able to hold himself in an actual fight it's like he's been a pencil pusher his whole life he knows all the bureaucracy and politics of this sort of stuff but he just wouldn't be able to be in a real fight and then they show it and they're like there you go audience do you understand because as you were saying like he gets a gun to his head and he's fucking shaking and sweating he gets tied up and the second they release him, he's like angry. He's like, you know, they're there, go get out. Like, even though in the moment he was like pissing himself. And then when he realizes they've tricked them all right after they think they've got them and they've lost basically their whole team. There's like three of them that are un- unharmed at this point and several that are dead. And he's just like, what the fuck? Like, this was horrifying. And what was it? Searching for one guy and hoping to find him because they think he murdered two people. And it's a complete disaster. Because this is the one thing I'm actually looking forward to in the next episode is the repercussions from the Empire. Surely they're going to be like, what the hell is going on down there? You've lost all of these guys. There's explosions. The town is like pissed off at everybody here. His his uh, superior officer, whoever, whoever that guy was, because uh, I didn't catch his name, I imagine he's going to be like, what the fuck have you done? Yeah. Like, why did you authorize all of this, you insane idiot? Yeah. And I think he that's was... good because I, I assume that's kind of why he looks so shocked um, in that, that moment because yeah. he's kind of contemplating the repercussions for his career and like maybe even his life for having done this raid and completely fucked it up. You also had interesting uh, decisions with Skarsgård because he was actually saying, I will kill this man. So, and you could say that, oh, he's just trying to get information out of him. But then later on, they were driving off. There was no reason to blow up that car and get everyone kind of did that because he wanted to um, yeah. and so he could easily like it does make doesn't really make sense why he spares one guy and not the others um and if Presumably, you're Cassian and would have would stopped be, him from doing that one yeah yeah well that's the thing will Cassian have problems with him the fact that he's willing to go to more lengths than Cassian is kind of thing mm. um that's kind of where I'd like it to go sort of the the sort of interpersonal stuff yeah. with regards I, I... to um the main soldier the like the one who got shell shock I can't remember his name um, but it does seem like they're setting up that all of his higher ups and the people around him are idiots rather than him. So I, I, I do wonder if they're just going to um, pick out a couple of people within that whole thing and make everyone else just like, as I said, lazy, incompetent people. I, I don't know if they're, if they're necessarily going to make them idiots, but I think it's more like he's so idealistic and so driven because like, he's not doing this. I, I don't get the impression he's doing this for promotion or personal gain. It's like, he just has this really like strong sense of justice, almost like in doing his job. Um, and I think that puts him at odds with the, the more cynical guys around him. Not yeah, that I wouldn't they're, say they're, they're idiots, but they're, they're more just like realistic. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what they will, they'll eventually set up is like a redemption arc for him where he's going to like turn to the resistance almost because it's like he realizes do, yeah. he's just going to get fucked over by like everyone else around him. No one cares. 
Because if you think about it, I wouldn't call his superior stupid when he said, let's just class these as killings or accidents, that they, they were doing something good. Something, I quite liked it when he said something, uh, you know, inspiring but mundane. Like, yeah. we don't want it to be too <laughs> interesting. But I was just like, wow. Because, uh, you know, you could be like, well, that's, that's a crazy move. It's like, well, if they had done that, things would be a lot better. So many people would be alive where they aren't now if they had just done that. It's, it seems like everyone there is very familiar with the systems and how they work. This guy is not, and he's trying to run by the book, which is not like it's not a realistic thing. And he's learning like already the, how fucking bad things can go. It's a good way of building a world as well, though, like that, isn't it? Because you don't ever see in the real world any totalitarian system, any ideological system, even which is kept running because every single person in it is an ideologue and is passionate and is sort of the, the evil mastermind of the group. Like most of these settings, whenever they are actually believable, do go for that banality of evil aspects. You will mm. get some ideologues, you will get some idealists as well. But when it comes to the imposition of any kind of sort of fascist dictatorship system like the one you see in the Empire, you have to realize that actually for a large number of people, this isn't anything exceptional. This isn't something you really believe in or otherwise. This is the system you live in. And you have some very small minded men who just very much like getting to the top of any particular system, especially if it gives them that sort of like micro totalitarian, micro megalomani uh, micro megalomaniacal, that's the word, power over their um, fellow people um it's, i'm glad it's you said of... that because i couldn't help <laughs> <laughs> took, a, took, a, took a run up at that one um so I, I quite like that the, they have this this spread of, of characters but the, the other thing i think i mean there's there's the question that we raised earlier about you know is is are we just praising this by comparison because everything else that's come out around it has been Definitely. so terrible um i think there's there must be a degree of that being the case um but also, I think you know some of the criticisms that are being raised here suggest that no, there, this, there is actually something genuinely of merit in the show itself as well. Like you don't make the kinds of points that have been made so far if there's nothing the show could stand up and say, well, I own this, and actually this is quite good in its own right. And yet, yeah, sure, it's it's lovely that we're not sitting here saying like, why the hell did he say I grew up surrounded by water? Or <laughs> I wonder, I wonder which sand monster he's going to try and fly a spaceship into this week. Like, we're not having yeah. to say any of that. That's good, but we are actually having to make some slightly more interesting criticisms of the show itself so it's not just that it isn't stupid i think there are some good things in it it's doing as well it's just it, again the question is whether it can sort of keep these up without falling for allegory again well, thanks for watching this clip if you're interested in supporting this channel then my new novel dark harvest is available to order from all online retailers link in the description anyway that's all i've got for today go away now <laughs>